This is Baggers View. Coming up, West Brom bid to do the double over Arsenal. Hello and welcome to Baggies View. I'm Paul Bradley and I'm joined in our Fort Dunlop studios by Chris Lipkowski. Hi Chris. Hi. What's Arsenal up next for West Brom? Uh, good time to be playing them? Uh, yeah, if you if you uh, count their recent results, I think they've got knocked out of every competition they've been in in the last three weeks. The Carling Cup, which of course we saw at uh, Wembley and then the FA Cup and the Champions League as well. So they've got nothing else to play for other than the title. And on the one hand, you know, you would hope you've got a dispirited, uh, slightly demoralised Arsenal team. But, uh, you know, on the other end of the scale, we all know what their players are capable of if they turn up. I'm sure Roy Hodgson will be reminding his men of the famous 3-2 victory at the Emirates earlier on this season. Just how confident uh, Bag is going to be going into this game? Well, they'll be confident because they are got great results at Birmingham. Um, I mean, the Arsenal result, which obviously came under Robbie Di Matteo, um, They'll take some heart from that, but when all said and done, it won't really have much bearing on this Saturday's game, other than give the fans some belief that they can actually get something out of this. I think the players will go into it very confident. They'll know if they're organised and disciplined. It doesn't take much to rattle this Arsenal team. We've seen that they're a little bit, un, I wouldn't say unhinged, but certainly a little bit loose in terms of their morale and their sort of spirit and, and discipline at the moment. So, you know, th- there's no reason why Albion can't get something. And of course, it's going to be a tough test for West Brom's defence, which we know uh, Roy Hodgson has been working on with them a lot. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen what Arsenal can do when they go forward, they attack well, they pass the ball around well and they do play with pace. So, you know, if Albin can keep the discipline and shape, then they give themselves a chance. And in terms of how big this game is, it's just another one of those huge games in the relegation battle that looks like it's going to be going on until the end of the season. I think so. I think um, just chatting to Stephen Reid last week, uh, we were speculating on the amount of points needed and it's probably going to be nearer towards 45 uh, maybe something like 43 might be enough, but it's looking like 40 won't be enough this season. And I can see it going to the last few games, maybe even to the very last game, if not involving Albion and certainly involving other clubs. OK, well, you mentioned Stephen Reid there. We caught his thoughts on the relegation battle and here's what he had to say. Good few results. It's sort of a bit of a, sort of a, bit of a mini run now. Mm. I think it's... Well, I'm only, only looking at sort of the last... A couple of games, but I think it's sort of four, about four unbeaten now, three draws, and obviously the win. So it's not a bad, bad little run we're going on now at the, obviously at the right time of the season. But obviously everyone else down there seems to be yeah. picking up points as well. So you know, it looks like it's going to go all the way. You know, it's thirty two points mm. after twenty nine games. Not yeah. a, it's not a bad return really. And but yeah. you look around you, and West Ham are looking strong again. They always seem to at this time of year. Good point last night for for Birmingham as well. So it's going to be tight. Yeah, it's going to be tight. And I think it will go all the way this year. It's probably minimum you're looking at is 40 points. Well, that was Stephen Reid. Um, now turning to the, the time off that West Brom have, players have had, um, what have they been up to? Uh, well, they've been doing a training, obviously. They've given a few days off. Uh, Petrod and Wingy, for instance, went back to Nigeria uh, for the Nigerian Player of the Year awards, he finished runner-up in that to Vincent Enyema of Tel Aviv. So he, he he did reasonably well. I think he was expected to win it actually. So um, you know to be second best player in your country is a great honour. Um, I think Paul Shiner went back to Austria for a few days as well. So it, it's been a case of trying to recharge their batteries. And the key thing is they have now got a game to focus on, as opposed to what could have been a three-week gap between their last game and and Liverpool coming up. Well, thanks for that, Chris. And today we finish um, Baggy's view on the sad news that former football writer in the Midlands, Ray Matz, has died aged 70. Now, Chris, Ray Matz, he worked for the, the Birmingham Evening Mail for a fair few years. Just tell us a bit about him. Yeah, Matz, he covered West Brom uh, for the Birmingham Evening Mail, as it was then back in the 1970s. It was a great era to, to cover any club, really, in that you know, it was a different kind of sports journalism back then, different kind of relationship with managers and players. And he remained in Midlands football. He also covered Formula One, uh, both for the Daily Mail, and he'll be really missed. I mean, he he's one of these personalities who could come in and, 
and reel off an anecdote and he always had a story to tell none of which I could say on air I have to say but yeah it was very sad it was very it's fairly sudden and um, there's a few of us in you know very saddened and shocked this morning. Okay Chris well thanks for that and of course our thoughts are, are with Ray Matz's family and our condolences go to them. That's all we've got time for today on Baggers View we'll see you again next week.